Hey, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are all having a good morning. In today's video, I wanted to go through a real world example of using Swift to help us calculate how much money we can earn off of something like a 401k savings account or just any regular savings account in general. So I never put a whole lot of money away in my savings accounts because I always thought they were a little confusing and somewhat intimidating. So in today's video, hopefully you can understand how savings accounts, how they work a little bit more. And uh, this is a really good way to actually practice how to write Swift in a more real world scenario. So hopefully you are excited. We're going to dive into Playgrounds right now. All right, so here we are loaded up with Playgrounds and I'm currently using Xcode 9 here. And let's kind of see how we can write out a function that calculates my ending balance on a savings account for let's say X number of years. And there's two scenarios that I'm going to go through today. The first one is called simple interest. And then the second one is a little bit more complicated called compound interest, all right? So let's go through how to calculate this using a little bit of math here. And the example I'm gonna show you today is uh, obviously not exactly how the real world works, but uh, let's go through it nonetheless, all right? So, the first thing I'm going to do is to kind of start off with something called a starting balance. And let's say I am putting money away in the bank and I am putting $1,000 into that savings account. And the next thing that you have to know about here is how much the interest rate is on that account. So I'm going to say let APY equals 0.1. Okay, so what exactly does APY stand for? Well, it means annual percentage yield, like that. And this is a 10% interest rate, which is a really, really good return rate on a savings account. And so to calculate the ending balance, I'm just going to say let ending balance equals, let's see, our starting balance times APY. And that should give us 100, right? So you can kind of see down here that we can't uh, apply the multiplication operator on the type of int and double. So what does this mean? Well, starting balance is actually an int. So I'm going to kind of declare its type as double instead. And that will allow us to use a double and a double to make this calculation. So the ending balance is 100 right now. And obviously that is not correct. So I'm gonna add on my starting balance to that value, uh, giving me $1,100 using this calculation. So this is my ending balance. All right, so let's make this example a little bit more interesting by introducing the number of years. And I'm gonna just set that value to two. Now I'm going to modify this calculation to use this number of years variable to calculate how much money my ending balance will turn out to be after two years. And I'm simply going to multiply the beginning right here by number of years. And I'm going to also cast this to a double like so. So the reason why that didn't work is because number of years int and now this calculation returns me a value of 1200. So after two years, we have 10% off of 1000. That gives me $200. And adding that onto the 1000 in the beginning gives me $1,200. So this is how you would calculate something called the simple interest uh, rate on your account. And now what we want to do is perhaps change this number of years to, I don't know, five, and that'll give me $1,500. So pretty straightforward calculation there. And we're gonna move on to something called the compound interest now. So for those of you that don't understand what compound interest is, basically after one year, you get you know your first uh, interest rate to be applied onto your account, and then you end up with, let's say, $1,100, right? So the next year, your interest rate should apply to $1,100 instead of just 1,000. So I'm going to walk you through the compound interest case right below there. So let's copy the comment over, paste that down here. And I'm going to declare a variable called running balance instead. And I will set that to starting balance. And all the way on the right side, you see that it equals 1000, right? So that's what we have for our first year. And after one year, we'll get some interest on the amount of money that we put away. And what does the running balance turn out to be? Well, it's kind of the exact same calculation as what we had up there. 
So that's pretty much the interest that we'll earn. So that's running balance times APY. And that's 1,000 times APY, which is 0 0.1, which gives us 100. And I'm going to add a running balance onto that value, giving me 1,100, right? So that's exactly the same calculation as we had before for one year. And to actually get the second year, we just simply copy and paste this whole calculation again. And we simply apply the uh, percentage yield onto the first ending year's balance, okay? So basically, if we multiply this value now by 0 0.1, and then we add 1,100 to that value, giving us uh, $1,210. So that's how the compound interest rate works. You can kind of see that if you do this like five times, this is pretty much the ending balance after five years. And this is $1,610, which is about $110 more than $1,500. So you can obviously tell right now that if you have a savings account that has compound interest, you actually make a lot more money at the very end of the account's uh, lifetime. All right, so let's kind of try to write a function that helps us determine after 30 years how much my compound interest ending balance will end up to be. Well, you can actually do this by copying and pasting this like 30 times. So 30 times, let's see, until uh, you get this 30 times, and then you'll end up with 30 years and your compound interest ending balance. Okay, you can do that and it's perfectly fine, but it's very hard to modify that to, let's say, calculate 40 years or 100 years. You would have to keep changing this whole calculation. So uh, in order to kind of write out this function here, let's first simplify this bit of code so that we don't have to type all of this stuff out. And you can kind of see that you can simplify this out to be, let's say, running balance times let's see, one plus APY. So we're just basically factoring out running balance and you get one plus APY. And that's how this simplifies uh, into this. And uh, we're going to simplify this even further by saying running balance times equals uh, one plus APY. And basically this is something called syntactical sugar, I believe. And this line right here simply converts down to this line. Okay, so I'm gonna comment out all this code right here. You can kind of see we have $1,100 there on the second year, and the third year, and the fourth year. You're going to get the exact same values because we are doing the exact same calculation. So you can kind of see how that works: 1,600 uh, or $1,610. All right, so really good stuff there. And now we will write out a function or some kind of loop to help us make this calculation a lot easier. So I will write out a bit of syntax so that I can make a loop for uh, 30 times. So let's say zero dot 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 30. I think that'll work out for me as a dot for each like that. And I'm gonna hit enter to get my auto completion code like that. And let's just use the value of i for that integer value. And now we're going to print out what i is, all right? So let's see what this whole bit of syntax uh, does. And essentially, we're just printing out 0 to 30. So let me kind of explain how this works here. 0 dot 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 30 gives me an array from 0 to 30. And we're just iterating through that entire array, printing out what each of those values are. It's pretty straightforward there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out all this code down here. And I will, again, establish what my running balance is at the very top there. And that should be 1,000 right there. And inside of the loop, I'm going to apply the running balance times equals 1 plus APY, kind of like what we had down there. And then we will simply print out what running balance is at the very end of the loop. And that'll give us $19,000, okay? So this is actually being executed 31 times. So in order to get it to execute 30 times, you can put 
dot dot lesser than and that'll give you 30 times like so okay so running balance is about seventeen thousand dollars at the very end of 30 years and if you change this value to let's say 30 like that you kind of see that the ending balance for this simple interest calculation gives us four thousand dollars so this difference right here is about thirteen thousand and let's say five hundred dollars so that's quite a huge difference in terms of the calculation here and the reason why the difference is so much is because the annual percentage yield is very very high so 10 percent interest rate is actually super super high and for typical 401k plans that is actually the value that they use when they quote your uh, return rate so that's very optimistic and let's say this is actually a savings account right and savings account usually have a rate of return using 1.2 or 1.3 percent even that's pretty high so that'll give you uh, the value of fourteen hundred and seventy three dollars which is about eighty dollars more than thirteen ninety so you can kind of see that the difference is actually quite a lot smaller okay so if you have a balance of let's say five thousand dollars at the very beginning you kind of see that over time the difference is indeed a lot larger and let's say your uh, APY interest rate is six percent instead of ten percent you see that at this at these values here uh, the amount of money that you make using compound interest is actually about double the simple interest calculation all right so that's how you write a loop to help you execute that 30-year compound interest and let's say I want to write a function that helps me do all of this instead of writing out the code kind of raw like what we're doing here so let's do that by defining a function so a function uh, let's see calculate let's make this as explicit as we can compound interest uh, of balance right here and I'm going to have this function take in a starting balance which is going to be a double and it needs to return some kind of double value for my ending balance all right so to fix this error right here you need to return some kind of value so let's give the value of starting as the return variable okay so now you can actually say calculate compound interest of some kind of starting balance let's say it's a value of 500 this actually should give you 500 because we're simply returning 500 and that's exactly what we get so to make this calculation very very easy we would perhaps copy this bit of code let's say do we want to copy uh, let's just type this again so we're going to execute 0 to 30 like that and say for each you can hit a brace but actually let's use enter for the completion handler you can use the underscore if you don't need the I value and I'm going to say uh, running balance so uh, running balance is some kind of value that is actually not accessible inside of this function so let's just say var uh, rb equals starting so this is my starting value and rb times equals one plus apy very similar to what we have here and we will return what rb is inside of this function here so essentially we're using the starting balance and we're calculating over 30 times what rb needs to be and at the very end you kind of see it is two thousand and eight hundred dollars roughly so if we use the value of one thousand you'll see that it should equal the same value down below here so let's say we have twenty eight thousand dollars and this right here is not exactly what it is okay so we have five thousand here let's change that to one thousand so all of these values are calculating towards the starting balance of 1000 right now okay so really good there and let's introduce the number of years inside of this function now so number of years equals some kind of int value right so number of years is just this 30 value so let's replace number of years so number of years and it is not equal but instead we use a colon to give us the number of years and right here we need to fix this function call to include number of years and this will be the value of 30 
giving us what we had before of $5,743. And that's kind of how all this works. Now you can also change this to include the interest rate as well. All right, so finally, let me try to make a calculation here that's more realistic to what you would have in a real 401k account. So let's say by the time you are 40 years old, you have saved up to, let's say, $100,000. So inside of this calculation here, I'm also going to modify the starting balance to $100,000. And let's say 40, you would have to take 25 years to actually retire at 65 in the USA. And that's going to give me a 25 value here. And I'll modify that to be 25 as well. And having a 6% return on a 401k plan, you can start off with $100,000 at 40 years old. And by the time you reach 65, this whole calculation right here tells you that you will end up with 400 and roughly $430,000, which is quite a bit of difference compared to $100,000, right? So you can kind of see that because of the high return rates of a 401k, as well as the compound interest that you get year over year, the amount of money that you have when you are ready to retire at the age of 65 is actually quite a bit of money. If you modify this to be something even higher, like let's say $200,000, right? At the very end of your uh, 25 year career, or perhaps when you're up to 65, uh, you will have 85 or 858 thousand dollars which again is a lot of money so make sure you guys put enough money towards your savings right now all right so that's how you write out a function inside of swift 4 that will allow you to calculate the compound interest ending balance for a savings account such as a 401k so hopefully you found a lot of useful information inside of this video Hopefully you found some tips and tricks that you'll use later down the road as well. If you want to learn more about Swift development and iOS application development, make sure to check out the Swift Instagram Firebase course down below using the link in the description. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Keep on coding guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.